them, um, as I had mentioned, um, shared this, this phrase, I am in joy. Um, and I just, I loved it so much. I loved it so much. And I was, I was just giving some thought to that, you know, when am I in joy? And certainly I'm in joy when I'm creating. Um, but I, I gave that a little bit more thought and, and what about creating puts me there and it's, it's symbiotic. It's, it's, well, I'll go forward and it'll, it'll explain itself. So, um, I'm, I'm in joy when I slow down. I'm in joy when I, when I have new experiences and when I just revel in really simple pleasures, I, that's when I'm my most present. And that's when I just, I see everything. I appreciate everything and it makes me want to create. Um, I feel very tuned in. And then conversely, when I'm creating, all that I'm thinking about is creating. My mind clears out completely. And all that I'm thinking about is line or color or movement. And that that is so joyful for me. That is so peaceful for me. Um, I, um, I'm really tuned in to engaging my senses. When all of my senses or most of my senses are engaged, I'm in joy. I'm in joy. So last year, um, I'm going to play this very short video clip because it, it just speaks to all of it. Last year I was in Santa Fe and um, I was on a hike with my friend in these Aspens and all of my senses were activated. Like the sound of the leaves, the smell of the wood, the feel of the bark, every, everything was so heightened and it was just the most joyous, joyous moment. And this is what I look like in joy. <clears throat> Beautiful. Like, look at those leaves blowing and listen to them. It was just just spectacular and it and it and it inspires me. So being in joy inspires me. And then it's just like this this continuing process. Oh, I did not mean to play that again. Um, nature inspires me. Nature inspires me. And um, this was something I had made just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it started out as a mistake. And it turned into something. I actually find joy in when I get to a point in making something where I don't like it or I make a mistake because it pushes my brain to let go and to think differently and to experiment in a way that perhaps I wouldn't. Um, so these are just these are just acrylic paintings on um, on logs that originally I had a different plan for and and it didn't work out and this is what resulted and I and I loved it. Observing and valuing the little things, whether they're an object or an emotion or a moment. So I, um, I, I, when someone, when I was working and someone emailed me or wrote something that made me feel good, I printed it. I printed it and I put it in my sketchbook. Um, those are the things I want to remember, you know, and, and I give them, I give them the attention they deserve. I don't just look at it and go, oh, that was nice and delete it. I really slow down enough to, to appreciate it. This, this little Mary Jane wrapper, that was my mom's favorite candy, you know, and, and yeah, just the wrapper, just like, I love that wrapper. It, it, it fills me with so many memories of my mother it's kind of silly 
And it's kind of beautiful all at the same time that a candy wrapper can do that, but we have to slow down enough to let it, right? I could have just eaten that candy and tossed the wrapper away. I practice gratitude all the time and I notice when I'm grateful for something. I don't just have a moment. I like really savor it. Um, so the the image of the pine cone, um, I I I <laughs> anyone who knows me knows I'm I'm like obsessed with pine cones. I'm obsessed with pine cones. I think they're like the most fabulous object. Um, I love drawing them. I love making art with them. And last year, I found one on a hike that was split open, and I have never seen, or maybe I never slowed down enough to notice, I have never seen the inside of a pine cone. And when I saw the inside of this thing, it was like I found a piece of gold. And everyone around me was like, all right, enough with the pine cones. But I was like, oh my God, are you seeing what's happening in here? This is spectacular. Nature is spectacular. And um, I still have this pine cone. I still have it because I'm just so impressed by it. <laughs> um, the picture of the baby, um, you might be thinking like, oh, I'm grateful to have this baby in my life, which I certainly am. This is my first great niece and the first time I got to visit her. Um, and I was grateful for her smile, but I was really grateful for the shadows. I was really grateful for this beautiful composition she gave me in this picture and like the, the contrast of the colors. I just was like, wow, this, this is great. And I'm in joy when, when I when I find meaning and I make connections, um, and and maybe Jim, that's some of what you were talking about with patterns. You know that my my I, I kind of I lift up when when I can see those things and make sense of those things. Um, so this mixed media piece of art. Um, is something that I did in honor of my mom. Um, I may have talked about it if you were in a previous presentation. Um, and the symbol for my mother, and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more in a minute. My symbol for my mother is a rooster and her color is red. And when I work with those images and colors in artwork, it, oftentimes is in an honoring of her. Um, and so this was, you know, this was a piece that I had made um, not long after she had passed away. Um, and anytime I see a rooster, it's a visit. I'm like, oh, hi mom, I'll be in the middle of a store and see a rooster and just literally say hello to my mother out loud. Um, and it's a connection and it, and it, and it brings me joy. So I, um, I had asked everyone to bring something to, to this class, a, a memento. I, I was looking for a word. I was driving myself crazy looking for a word that described what I wanted you to bring. Um, one that came to me recently was a, a personal artifact. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering what people brought with them. I'd like to maybe start there. I don't know if you want to um, hold it up. Maybe that would be the easiest thing to do for right now. If you if you just kind of hold up or, or point to what you have. So we have jewelry and we have photos and sculptures and records and mugs and stuffed animals. And awesome, awesome. Excuse me, I can't see anybody's, uh, all I see is the words personal artifacts. Oh, but... because I have to stop sharing my screen for a moment. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, so let's just, let's just have that share for, for a moment. So, um, 
we're we're all going to want to talk about these. Everyone, I know everyone's like, oh, I've got this great thing and I, and I want to talk about it. And I will make time for that um, while, oh, shells, nice, while we're creating. Um, but what, I, what I'd like to take a moment to do is maybe just really dig into why these things are special to us. Um, and so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen again for a moment. And what I want everyone to do is, is maybe just take a minute to slow down. And I'm going to put up some guiding questions for you. Bear with me. I want everyone to just slow down for a moment and really think about the object that you brought with you today. Um, you don't have to answer all of these questions, but I think it might be helpful for you to just jot down a couple of notes to yourself. Um, so I want you to think about where this object came from, like really observe this thing, right? Where does, where did it come from? This is mine. Oh, you can't see again. I'll, I'll come back in a minute. Um, where it came from. What memory is associated with it? And you don't have to, if, if you like writing and you wanna write sentences, great. If you wanna just think about it, if you wanna just jot down a couple of words, whatever whatever is good for you. Um, what memory is associated with it? Who comes to mind? Who comes to mind? Can you guys see me on your screen? No. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yes, what, I see you. Okay. What, sen what senses are being activated? What senses? So you have this object. Sally, did you want to? Yeah, I just wanted to say if everybody goes up to their view, at the upper right and put side by side gallery, they'll see, they'll see you and they'll see, um, they could do side by side speaker or side by side gallery, and then they'll see your shared screen and you or everybody else. Fabulous. I don't Thank have you. anything like that. I'm using an iPad. I think it depends if you're on a computer or an iPad. Yeah. iPad people, you may have a little bit more limited access to see things. Um, so, what senses are being activated? For those of you who can see me, I'm holding up a little sculpture that I've made. Um, and this sculpture is a hug. Some of you may be able to see it. I have a picture of it that I'll show in a little bit. And I love holding it. It fits perfectly in my hand, mm. lives by my computer. So what senses are being activated? Is it touch? Is it sound? Does the thing you have remind you of someone's voice or laughter? Is it a smell? What place does this bring you back to? Vacation, a dream, a family gathering? And what feeling does it bring you? What feeling does it bring you? Is there comfort? Is there love? Is there strength? Just take another minute there to sit with that. Write some notes to yourself and hold on to your object, feel it.
Oh, nice. Beautiful. So, and if you're still writing, keep writing. I'll just I'll just be background noise for a minute. Um. So what you're looking at is <laughs> what the base of my computer looks like right now. Um, all of these little things here sit sit at my desk, and um, I don't I don't know where you had your personal artifact. If it was someplace that was out and visible, or if it was tucked in a night table drawer. Um, or if you're wearing it, if you're wearing it. Um, I have little things all over my house. I have, they're like, I, I, I feel like they're my ancestor strength, you know, <laughs> when, I, when I need a little, uh, little something. And so what you're seeing at the base of my computer, um, the sculpture, oh, my mouse is so sensitive. The sculpture is, um, as I had mentioned, is a, a sculpture that's a hug. Um, it was a dream that I had um, with my mom. My mom's been gone like 15 years. Oh, I'm still, I'm still every day with her. You know, I'm still every day with her. Um, and this, again, if you can see me, this little sculpture just fits right in my hand. And so like, I love just holding it and playing with it when I'm talking to people or, or sitting doing work. Um, the candle um, is a candle that smells like my aunt's house. And um, when, I, when I want her with me, I can just like open that candle up and smell it. Um, the stone, uh, which is this incredible, incredible blue um is a is a stone that changes with the light and it's about transitions and and being flexible with change um the photo is is me and my husband um from long long ago and yeah these are just like my soothing and that's just that's just the tip of the i mean you can see behind me like <laughs> there's 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 just things. There's just things that I get those feelings from. Um, so what I want you to do next is, again, with your object, we're going to get a little bit more specific now. Oh, that is not what I wanted. Um, so with the, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute. So I don't want you to see my end game yet. Um, so with your object now, I want you to think of two adjectives. We're gonna we're gonna pare down all your loose thoughts. I'm gonna streamline a little bit. I want you to think of two adjectives to describe it. And Maybe some of the um, writing that you just did before will help you. Like, what are the most important things? Like, I could hold up my object and go, "Oh, it's gray and it's handheld," but try to get a little, a little deeper than that, right? So, for me, my two adjectives are safety and strength. And maybe those, maybe those two adjectives are feelings. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a good place to go with it. And if you have more than two, write them down. We'll pare down. And the next thing I want you to think about is three verbs, three verbs to describe your object. Now, if your object is connected to a person, which I'm kind of gathering it is, then maybe those verbs or those adjectives are about the person. If the object is about a place or a memory, then maybe it's, it's about you. And again, what are, what are the, 
what are the verbs that you want to associate there? Maybe they're ing verbs. If that's an, you know, if you have ing as your grounding point, mine is visiting, comforting, and supporting. And again, if it's more than three verbs, write down more. And just keep looking back at your object and holding it and checking it out. Get your senses engaged with it. Slow your brain down a little bit. And my headphones are about to die, so bear with me while I switch over. <laughs> Can everybody still hear me? Yep. And when you've come up with the adjectives, I'm sorry, with the uh, verbs, three verbs, the next thing I want you to do is come up with a sentence. A four-word sentence, if you can streamline it. Again, if you need to start bigger, start bigger. Try to come up with a four word sentence. And again, if that feels too limiting and you need more than one sentence, few extra words, but really we're trying to get to the essence of it. All right. If you need another minute or two, can you raise your hand? Okay, so I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. How was that for everyone before I share my screen? You guys can unmute if you'd like. Was it hard? Was it joyous? Was it, did you feel pressure? Where is everybody? Go ahead. Yeah. Judy. You're on mute still. 
I take it back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I found it. I found it kind of hard because mine is a childhood object, so it brought up a lot of stuff for me. Um, uh -huh. Not all of which was wonderful. Some of which was. So I got. I, I wanted to run away from it after a while. I love it. And yet it's an object that you hung on to and saved. I keep it in the front room of my house next what is to it? something. It's, it's a little sculpture I made when I was a child in the ceramics um, shop in this community I grew up in in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I made it up, but I think my mother's friend glazed it for me as she glazed everything that every kid did. You know, so you got that? You know, and where did you say you kept it next to what I keep it on in the in my living room on a beautiful rosewood sewing table and next to it is a yellow horse that belonged to my mother so I have the the two critters <laughs> and I look at them all the time hmm. yeah yeah well Mel before I take your I'll, I'll get to you in a second um I just wanted to acknowledge how beautiful it is to have something to still have something that you made as a child like no matter what emotion it brings to you that that has persevered through your life whatever moves you've made whatever things have been thrown out or given away that you still have that that's powerful to me that's really powerful to me thank no. you yeah, Mel. It brought me a lot of joy because it makes me think of the person who made this mug, which is my granddaughter, Ruby, who made it for me six years ago when I was 75. Mm. And I drink from it every single day. I Three times a day when I take my vitamin supplements, <laughs> uh, which is a lot. <laughs> and uh -huh. This is the only thing that I drink from. Does Ruby know that? Yep, she certainly does. Good. Man. <laughs> Good. Yeah, Sally. Oh, well, <clears throat> I have a little heart that my daughter gave me, oh, I don't know how many years ago, I guess when she was in maybe elementary school or high school, I don't remember. But it's just, a, it's like a perfect heart that she made. And, and she just wrote these sweet words on it. It says, out of all the moms, I would pick you. And I just love that. Instead of saying, I love you, you know, she wrote yeah. that. And uh, it just, um, it just warms my heart because it reminds me how my daughter is just, I, my, my sentences were showing and expressing feeling. Mm. She's able to do that. Beautiful. And, uh, some people met her, Arlene met my daughter. <laughs> And uh, she, I just made me, it makes me happy because I don't see her very much. She lives so far away. So when I just, re I think of her and it makes me happy. <laughs> I love the handwriting too. Like I'm very, um, I'm very attached to people's handwriting and um, little notes and things like, because that's just her. That's just her, right? <laughs> This must have been a while ago because now when she writes, she writes like a typewriter. It's like perfect. <laughs> so this must have been a while ago. It's still it's still pretty clear. You can see it. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but it's not straight. Now she just writes absolutely straight. I don't know how she does it. I have I write chicken scratch. They can't can't even read my writing when I write a note. So it always makes me laugh. I love that. I love that. It yes yes. You're on mute. And I apologize, it's only coming up as Diane Sussman, so I don't know who's speaking. Yeah. Unmute. Yeah. Unmute. Unmute Diane and Bob. Let's see if I can help you. They are. Uh, We're okay. Ready? Okay. Okay, so this is what I see every day when I walk mm -hmm. the dining room, and I have a physical. You have a physical reaction. Right now. Yeah. Is it joy? It is. It is some gratitude and wonder. 
Wow. What's her name? Her name is Poppy. Poppy? Yeah, she's special because uh, my, my son and daughter-in-law got married and uh, Poppy came into our lives when they were in their 40s. Uh, it was a hard birth. And I think if you were going to have one child, it's one. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Arlene, did you have your hand up? Um, I guess so. <laughs> uh, I have a violin. Um, not like Karen's, not a real violin. <laughs> this is a refrigerator magnet violin mm -hmm. and it comes with a bow. Oh, can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, this was given to uh, my husband and me maybe 25, 30 years ago <clears throat> when we lived in another place uh, by friends who knew that he was struggling to learn to play the violin. And uh, we always had it up on the refrigerator and he's no longer here. It's five years since he passed away, but I still have it on my refrigerator. And it, every time I look at it, I think of the fact that he started studying the violin as an adult mm. instead of starting as a child, which would have been the proper thing to do. But he was a, a scientist, he was a physicist. And when we got married, he decided he wanted to play the violin. So in every place we've lived, he's had violin teachers. Some of them have been really very, very excellent. One was at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, the first one. And we used to talk about the fact that his two older sisters had music lessons, but he was the youngest and they gave up on music with, <laughs> with him. So when I look at this, I think of the struggles that he had in learning how to play, plus the fact that we had a successful trio once where my daughter who plays the flute and I play the piano and he played the violin, we did a Bach sonata. We worked on it for a long time, and then we actually were at the Kennedy Center where Jean-Pierre Rampal was playing it. Wow. And, and um, it, it just brings back a lot of memories. So uh, when, I th when I see this, I, I think of, of how can I say some very sweet times, um, how he was really in love with the violin, and he was determined to be good enough to be in a quartet, which never really happened. Uh, he was in a small group, but it wasn't, you wouldn't call it a quartet. So this is it. And it's, um, it's a manufactured thing. It's, I mean, I have other stuff around the house that's been handmade, but this brings up a lot, a lot of memories. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Here it is. Beautiful. Is there anyone else who has something they felt like they wanted to share? Yeah. Karen. <clears throat> a, a very important person uh, in my life when I was younger, a spiritual mentor to me really, and um, somebody who I really, I ended up leaving that friendship for various reasons, but he died the day before yesterday. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. And, um, and he was still in, and I have a dear friend who he was still very much in her life. She's mm. Um, but when we were close, he gave me this, I can't remember if it was my, for my birthday or Valentine's Day, I don't know, but um, I, I've always had it out on a, a day bed in my house, hmm. but I rarely paid attention to it. But now that he is so much in my thoughts and memories of the past have been coming up and you asked us to pick it, it brought up this yeah, yeah. beautiful yeah. thing and it's. Yeah, good, good. Thank you. Anyone else? Me. Yes, Jim. I don't know if you can see this. Mm -hmm. I wake up to this every morning. This has my wife's picture in it and my picture in it, and we're holding hands. Mm. Beautiful. That's all I need to say. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Anyone? Yeah, Leslie. This. Um... My father had a collection of these. This is made of shells. This is little mollusks. Um, 
I was trying to think of what to bring up, but I kept coming across these in my closet. Um, and I just, I said, I, I kept coming back to this. I have a whole house full of memorabilia and letters and stuff from the kids. And, <clears throat> but I just kept seeing this and um, it has brought up so many intense emotions this morning. Mm -hmm. Thinking right. about him. And I, uh, it, it's very, I, maybe it's brought up grief mm. after losing him mm -hmm. that I never really was in touch with as much as I am just sitting here today with it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And maybe, maybe for, you know, for those of you who are, who, um, who going through this exercise brought up some sadness instead of joy like take a moment to acknowledge that that I, I, I've, I've always thought about love that love and hate for lack of a better comparison being two sides of the same coin right they're like very powerful emotions and and feeling feeling on some level is joy like if you if you're bringing those feelings back up you can you can look at them and you can let them go and you can acknowledge them you know so hopefully hopefully you move you move past those things as well um certainly i didn't mean to 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 jar negative feelings and it just happens it happens that's life right well yeah as as much as there's grief it comes from a place of missing joy. yeah yeah and thinking about all the good all the good things yeah, um, yeah. kind of took me by surprise because I only think about him and I smile yeah yeah um, I cried when he when he left for work my mother couldn't console me when I was a baby I looked yeah. out the window and cried <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, he was a lot of fun oh he was the funniest guy in the world and he loved to eat he and I loved to eat together <laughs> so he loved our Napoleons and uh till he oh. became diabetic so those those funny things are what I really think about, but yeah, and it, there's always a flip side to grief. Yeah. It means you had a lot of joy and a right. lot of something fun to miss. And, a, and a very intense, good relationship. So I don't see it as a negative. Good. Good. I think it's a connection to what I had and what I miss. Good. So yeah, Sally. I just want to say that whenever I um see my daughter or we're doing something great and she always says mom don't be sad it's over be glad it happened right yeah yeah right and that's i great. think that's so true because it's like we said we miss these people in our lives we miss when we don't see our grandchildren or our or there are loved ones but we have it we have it it's not it can't be all the time but yeah. it's so i i always like to think of that i think that um yeah that's great Sally. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's, that's a great kind of pulling together for us. Yes, Mel. Um, I just recently taught my grandson um, what happy tears were. When he saw me cry, mm -hmm. he said, Grandpa, what's wrong? And I said, <clears throat> great. happy tears. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, I, I you know, I, um, in the beginning of my presentation, I said that I'm in joy when I feel connected and, and how amazing that, that these artifacts have connected us today, right? Can everybody hold up their artifact one more time? Because I think we all learned a little bit about each other in, and ourselves in, in seeing those, right? And, and I'm going to, I'm going to remember some of those artifacts. When I look at your face, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, the monkeys. I remember. <laughs> the monkeys. Right. So um, I know some of you, I, I don't know if any of you need to go at this point, but I, I wanted to share one last activity with you just to kind of pull this all together a little bit. Um, so from all those things that you wrote down earlier, um, a, a friend of mine just this past weekend, actually, so this was the surprise, Jim, had talked to me about a type of poem called a, a sin, sinquain, I believe it's called. And it's it's actually, there's a, a formula to writing it. There's a, there's a map, right? So the, the first word is a noun. And then, 
So if you think about your object and you think about the things that you wrote down, is there a noun you want to kind of sum it up with? Followed by two adjectives. Followed by three verbs. A sentence with four words. And then a closing. And this is like your, your honoring of your artifact and what it means. Beautiful. Thank you. Nancy? Yes, sir. Do you mind if I call it a pattern? That would make me very happy. Love it when a plan comes together, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Love it when we can go full circle. Um, if you've noticed throughout this presentation, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, I'm I'm a very color driven person. I uh, I can make sense of my world more when I when I literally add color to it. And I did it in the first slide. And all of a sudden those those words and that thought made sense to me that I'm in when I'm creating and I'm in joy when I'm creating. And then when I looked at the word artifacts, like mind blow, art, I, facts. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like what? That's great. And when I came to this last writing, the words that I really wanted to hone in on in all of it, I put in blue. And it just helps me. Yeah. Organize my thoughts a little. That's neat. Blue doesn't show up very well in black, though. It's a little hard to see it. Really. Yeah, I was actually, you know, it's funny you say that because when I was choosing, I'm, as I mentioned, I'm very into to color and fonts and all of those design elements. And when it was all white, it felt like, jarring to look at like I couldn't separate out the words and blue to me felt soothing um so that's a shame that it's hard to read for you maybe Can it's you, my oh, eyesight sorry. maybe it's my eyesight yeah Can no you, no can yeah. you say again which words you made in blue I was writing my poem and I didn't hear what you said can you see it now much better oh that's so much better it is yeah which words did you choose to write in blue? Mom. I know. I, no, I can oh. read them. It's just, oh. why did you choose those particular words? I don't know. I felt them. Oh, okay. It was just random then. I, it was random, I guess. But, and then I also was noticing like this motion traveling down. Oh yes. It's visual. Yeah. Yeah. But it also says it's, it, it, emphasizes mom strength comforting and missing still yeah it's just kind of the poem yeah well that's what it simply is yeah. yeah it gets to the essence of the relationship right like everything we were doing here today right is just kind of bringing it all down to that to that essence started we started kind of broad and we were just Nice. really getting down to the point of it and and i think what i like about this style of poem too is that it creates a shape in itself yes you know so for my design sense my brain is always thinking visually i can't stop it it's it's how i perceive my world and so that appealed to me yes jim yeah before you go on i need to clarify something quickly the word the word in joy 
I N Joy comes from my wife, who was a poet and artist. And I must say, in a sad way, she got Parkinson's and all of her joy disappeared. Mm. I'm sorry so to hear that. Thank you for bringing her back to me today. You're welcome. <clears throat> So is there anyone who feels like they want to share their poem? No pressure. But if you do, we have we have a few minutes left. I respect. So I'm going to share one more thing with you. And if anyone changes their mind, just raise your hand. So um my original thought, so you're probably wondering like, why did we bring colored pencils to this? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, my original thought was that we were going to draw, that we were going to um, look at the object and, and kind of pare down the essence of it and draw. Um, and this was where I ended up um with mine oh. mm. um Beautiful. and the colors are a little off they're color pencil but where where i was was i sketched out my object and all of these other lines and colors were really about um like almost amplifying out the feeling that i was getting from the object um and then in the end, I put the words back in. And I found space for them within it. And this is just a sketchbook drawing. It's not going anywhere. It's just for myself. Um, but if anyone, you know, after we're done here is feeling inspired by, by that, that possibility, then I invite you to do that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when I make art, my brain just, you know, it, it clears my head. It clears my head. And it just becomes about, you know, these motions, these lines, these colors. Um, and it's very peaceful for me. And it gives me joy. Do you have any suggestions for those of us who don't think we're artistic? <laughs> Yes, my suggestion to you, and I don't mean this to sound um, arrogant or flippant, it, my suggestion to you is to not care. Mm -hmm. Don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Say more. It's, about, it's about feeling. It's about a feeling. In fact, I'll show you before I did this drawing, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute. Um, when I was first thinking about my, what I was doing, that's all it was. Hmm. Right. And that's. You have to move it over a little bit. I can't quite see it. Well, no, it's, it, it's because it's just pencil lines and. Oh, okay whirls and squiggles there's there isn't anything there to see but it was just me making connections between my my heart and my hand and my head and and letting it go on the paper you know some of our most joyous drawing was probably when we were preschool <laughs> and scribbling and that's fine it's not for anyone other than you yes Karen I was just going to say the exact same thing. I was once in a theater workshop and we were given an exercise that we should express a song through our body. And mm -hmm. I was the first one to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember, it was a long time ago. I don't remember what song I picked, but I was sort of acting out the song. And the woman who was teaching the workshop, a wonderful actress, she, she gave me constructive criticism that I never forgot. She said, do it for you. Don't do it for the audience. And that helped me tremendously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you said it just as I was raising my hand, yeah. you 
you gave that same advice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? All right, my friends. Well, I really enjoyed being with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Karen, do you want to say anything as sort of a wrap up or not? Uh, Reaction? I, love, I love this class. First of all, you exude creativity and joy of life, Nancy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. And, um, I was delighted by the whole class. And I liked the fact that you involved us in a sort of a natural way. Um, it was just a beautifully uh, wrought class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sally. I'm you. I want to echo the same thing. I so appreciate how you just even bring out the creativity in us by by your words Thank you. and um i i i just i didn't even think of it, picking this out but i whenever i have my jewelry box which is where i keep it i always look at it so i said okay and i felt the same way bob did uh it just brought like a lot of physical reaction i was surprised mm -hmm. you know i think when you pick up something like all the artifacts that people showed all of a sudden it, it touches you someplace it brings you back to 